<laughs> That's good. Good. All right. So, actually, the thing which I really loved when I was very little was maths. It was nice and easy, it was logical, I could do it. Uh, it's only when I started getting into my teens that maths started being a bit boring, as in I thought, what was the point? And at the same time, I was starting to sort of read science fiction books and see the odd documentary about astrophysics on television. And so at that point, I started getting into the astrophysics. But physics at school, to be honest, really bored me, because it was all very practical things and experiments, and that didn't appeal to me too much. But I kind of had the faith that I kept, if I kept studying it long enough, it would eventually get interesting. So the one word description would be I'm a cosmologist because that sounds like a nice succinct description and it also sounds quite exciting. And then I would sort of elaborate that, well, it's a mixture of astrophysics and particle physics. And the main thing I'm trying to do is work out what dark matter is. It's this mysterious stuff we think that it dominates the universe, but we're not exactly sure what it is and we haven't found it directly either. I think the thing I like most about my job is actually giving talks on my work because then you get to see what you've done, you put it together and realise you actually have achieved more than you think and then also to try and communicate it to other people and especially when things go well, they, you know, when they're interested and ask good questions and come up with ideas for things you can do in the future. The thing I like least is probably spending hours and days bashing my head against computer programmes that don't work because I've made some silly mistake and that's pretty tedious. So I, I guess it would definitely, the big discovery would be dark matter being di directly detected in the lab and hopefully something I've done having some input into that discovery. But even if it didn't, I'd still be pretty happy, I think. So I, I like trying to explain my, my work to people and in some ways it's quite easy to catch people's imagination with sort of the mixture of astrophysics and particle physics but the problem is often that it just seems very esoteric and so the obvious question that gets asked lots is why are our tax money going into looking for invisible particles which is actually a, a good question. And what's your answer? <laughs> um, well, it's, I think there are various levels of answers. Is one, you know, trying to understand the universe we live in is quite an important grail, and what, if there's room for sort of arts and things like that, then there should be room for understanding the universe. And more practically, actually, there's all sorts of spin-off technologies that come out of pure research. I mean, the cliche is that the, the web was invented at CERN for, by particle physicists, so there are all sorts of benefits that sort of come along the way that you don't expect when you start out. I'd argue there isn't really a stereotype. Oh, it depends what you mean by stereotypical scientist. The stereotype of geeky middle-aged men in lab coats simply isn't the truth at all. On the other hand, I guess most scientists do have a sort of common approach to, to their work and probably to life in general that tends to be quite methodical and analytic. So there are some stereotypical characteristics, but I wouldn't say there was a stereotypical person. That's I'll one of my pet peeves, actually. The number of times I'm told I don't look like a scientist is... <laughs> Why do the people tell you that? What do they say? Um, it, which just the common reaction is you, you don't look like a scientist. What about you do they say is unscientific? I tend not to actually probe too much. You don't... I, I guess being female is probably part of it, but not the whole thing. I guess it's sort of more sort of wearing purple clothes and dyeing my hair silly colours that is not what people expect. But it's, it's not uncommon either, so... So I find that often running is a good opportunity for thinking, because when I'm sat at my desk in front of a computer, it's really easy to get bogged down in the details and miss something, whereas when I'm out running and my mind's wandering, I'm listening to some music, thinking about anything, I'll suddenly realise that something I've been missing or a mistake I've been making so it often leads to, to breakthroughs that I wouldn't have had if I'd been chained to my desk banging my head against my work. Um, mixture of new metal and emo. Linkin Park are my favourite band at the moment. Okay so but you were saying when you were young it was you were piano weren't you? Yes yeah, so I mean I like playing classical stuff and it's very clever but I don't really enjoy listening to it I sort of prefer things a bit louder and more angry.